So just to take a step back, because you and I have known each other for a long time. You're a man of faith. You're a man of God. You're a man of family. With some of these nominees, Gates, Hegseth, RFK Jr., I wonder, does it matter anymore for Republicans to think of leaders as people who are moral in their personal lives? Is that still important to the Republican Party? Johnson appeared on CNN this morning, and let's just say he didn't hold back. Jake Tapper got hit with a dose of straight talk, and it was a brutal reality check. Let's dive into it. Um, Sure, it's an important issue for anyone in leadership. This is what I'll, I'll say about the nominees that the president has put forward is that they are persons who will shake up the status quo. And I think what the American people have, have believe and what they've delivered with the mandate in this election is a demand that we shake up the status quo. It's not working for the American people. So use the term in the opening uh, about how these are disruptors. They are. I think that's by design. Any president has the right to name their own cabinet, to nominate persons that they think will fulfill their agenda. And the people that, that are on this list will do that. They will go into the agencies that they're being asked to lead, and they will reform them. These agencies need reform. And I think the vast majority of the American people understand that. You can't have status quo appointments in a moment like this. Um, I, I, I'm really excited about the days ahead. I think the America First policies will deliver for the American people. I, I think we're going to have a warm embrace of all the new folks who came into the Republican Party in this election cycle, the demographic shifts that we saw that were historic, because we have a chance now to dis demonstrate for them that our policies, our conservative constitutional policies, common sense policies are best for them as individuals and families and, and communities and states and the nation as a whole. So exciting days ahead. It is a new day in America. These these individuals will help deliver that. And, and I think the Senate needs to do its job and get them appointed so that the president uh, President Donald J. Trump and J.D. Vance can begin that administration and, and run with it on day one. If you're enjoying this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Now let's keep watching. Do you think that the American people are ready for, if, the, if all, whatever it is, 20 million undocumented immigrants uh, are deported, do you think the American people are ready for not only the, the tremendous disruption in the workforce, in the economy, I think it's like 5% of the workforce is undocumented, but also the fact that we're going to be seeing images of families separated, people taken out of the communities they've lived in for years. Do you think the American people are fully prepared for that? Um, I'm not sure that's what's going to happen, Jake. I think what the president's talking about is beginning with the dangerous persons that we know are here. There are criminals, known criminals. There are known terrorists in the country. There are some who have been apprehended, apprehended for committing violent crimes after they come across the border illegally. So you start with that number, you've got, by some counts, as many as three or four million people that fit that category. Begin there and then see how it transpires. This will take a lot of thoughtful uh, work and deliberation, and I think the president is of exactly the right mind. And look, the American people want us to restore order in immigration. For four years, we've had a wide open border. The Biden administration did that intentionally. It's the reason that we had to take the extreme measure of impeaching Alejandro Mayorkas, the secretary of DHS. And it's the reason, I think, one of the primary reasons that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden himself, when he was running, had no chance of being All right, reelected. After hearing all that, here's what I think first. There's a lot of excitement on their side about these cabinet picks. And I get it. They're being framed as bold disruptors who are going to shake up the system. The idea is that these aren't just traditional politicians. They're reformers who will get into these government agencies and make big changes. It's a strong pitch. But whether they can actually deliver is another story. Shaking things up sounds good in the Ori, but reform takes more than just bold ideas. It needs smart execution and buy-in from people. Across the board on immigration, it's clear this is going to be a major focus. The speaker is walking a fine line trying to justify a hard line stance without making it sound too extreme. They're saying the priority is on deporting dangerous individuals first like criminals and terrorists, which seems like area zonable place to start. But Jake Tapper raises a good point. What happens if this turns into mass deportations? Are Americans really prepared for the economic fallout, workforce disruptions, and the emotional impact of seeing families separated? Those are B. I concerns and I don't think they were fully addressed here. It's also worth noting how much blame is being put on the Biden administration for the current border situation. While it's true the border has been a controversial issue under Biden, it's a long-standing challenge that didn't just appear out of nowhere, so while they're calling for restoring order, the real question is whether their approach will fix the problem or just create new ones. Overall, this was a mix of optimism and tough talk. They're confident about their, their direction and eager to show results, but... There are some big challenges ahead, especially with immigration. 
It's going to come down to whether their plans can actually deliver their reform they're promising without causing more problems along the way. Only time will tell if this is bold leadership or just more political theater.